Welcome back. I'm Tedward, and today, thanks to Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts, we're driving a Ferrari. This is a 1998 F355 Spider. It has a three and a half liter flat plane V8, naturally aspirated, of course, mid mounted, connected to a six speed manual gearbox. These were also available with the F1 style gearbox, which essentially automated those shifts and probably burned through clutches a little too fast, making maintenance on these even a little more expensive. But none of that matters because the exhaust note and style of this car is legendary and holds up today in 2024. Because I grew up in the 90s, this pit for a design is exactly what would have been above my bed. So I had like an F50 and this to me is just so emblematic of what a supercar was and what an exotic was. And these were not seen around my neck of the woods. I'd have to go to a very specialized car show to find someone who would have ponied up the money for one of these. Now this one is in gray titanium or grigio titanio i'm not so sure if i'm saying that correctly but i don't care anyway the coolest thing about the f355 is its engine this has five valves per cylinder which is kind of how it gets the name its predecessor the 348 had a 3.4 liter eight cylinder this has a 3.5 liter eight cylinder but because of its incredible head it has five valves per cylinder allowing it to make more power about 375 horsepower and that's i think why they just really wanted to strike that home and calling it the f355 so the nomenclature of ferraris kind of varies here and there based on what they're trying to shove down your throat as something that's innovative and technologically cool so let's take a look around we've driven one on the channel before to get in we've got a door handle way deep under here and we've got these big thick doors with these gorgeous vents or intakes really because it's funneling air into that engine compartment and then let's take a quick peek around front and around back in the rear here we have our mid-mounted three and a half liter v8 and the big problem with these cars is just that they're hard to work on you can't get to all of the belt system, which is in the front of the engine from here, because it wasn't until 360 that they started allowing that pass through. So in order to do service properly on the car, you have to remove the engine. There are people who have managed to make workarounds and things of that nature in indie shops, but if you're trying to get your Ferrari stamp, you're gonna pay big money just to replace belts. And because it's a Ferrari, you're likely not spending, you know, 25,000 miles every couple of years in the car. You're probably driving it only a few thousand miles a year. So even though the belts may not have worn away because of use they are going to wear out because of time so when you do go to sell these cars people will very much scrutinize when the last time you had a service done on your ferrari because that's a big bill under here you can see the red valve covers with chunque valvole down there to let you know that it's special but down here the exhaust pipes they're not massive they're not something that you're going to put your fist through they're kind of little pea shooters honestly but what's really cool is under here you can get a look at that transmission. So you actually see that when you're behind the car if you're low enough. Gluing us to the road on this gorgeous five spoke 18 inch wheel is a 225 section tire. And in the rear, a 265 section tire, which is not a ton of rubber, but this doesn't have a ton of torque. Up front, there's actually reasonable storage for some luggage. And of course this one has some gorgeous Ferrari stuff here. These are mostly just toolkits and service manuals, but I'm sure there was a very expensive option for expensive tan leather luggage. And then this one appears to have been modified with a Macintosh uh, amp for the sound system. But I assure you, we'll not need the sound system today because we're gonna be listening to Italy's V8 song. This flat plane V8 sounds so good and it's really satisfying to row it out through this gated manual gearbox. So let's jump in, start it up, and take it for a ride. It's a beautiful summer day, and I can't think of anywhere I'd rather be. Look at this, we got private jets flying overhead. We've got the right car for the job. Maybe we'll head to the airport. To start our F355, we'll get it in neutral. Immobilizer. Jumps right to life, baby. I love these gauges, they're super small, and that's really fun. It's a 10,000 RPM tachometer and a 200 mile per hour Speedo. This one has 50,000 miles on it, so that's pretty impressive. Someone definitely loved and enjoyed this car. It's just, oh, it's so good, it's so smooth. To release our parking brake, just like an Aston Martin, you pull up, press, and push down. 
standard H pattern gearbox to get into reverse. It's a down, over, and down. In the first gear, and away we go. most about this car is just how smooth this engine is it revs out to like 8500 rpm but it, it really wants to it feels like there's nothing's going to break which is insane because it's a delicate thing and i think it requires some maintenance and people usually think of these as fragile but unlike a lot of other engines you know drive like a eight or nine thousand rpm honda and i'm sure a honda versus a ferrari not quite the same thing but those always sound like, oh boy, I can't believe it's still going, it's still going. This just is a sewing machine all the way to Redline. It's friggin' amazing. Once you get the hang of it, rev matching, it's really easy. You've got to manhandle the gearbox a little bit but it's satisfying and the little click you get when you slam into the next gear is fantastic. I love how the sound of this engine changes through the rev range. In the low end, it's pretty grunty. In the mid range, it perks up a little bit and then it almost feels like it's hitting sort of a VTEC. And it really wakes up and that's where all the juice is. But at all times, it sounds and feels special. And that's why these are worth the money they're worth. Because sure, you could complain about some interior quality and things of that nature. But the reality is getting to operate this engine and gearbox in a mid-engine Ferrari is so special. And it doesn't matter what the market says. It doesn't matter what the maintenance is. It doesn't matter what your friends say about how annoying it was to own or maintain or just keep it going. It's like 
it's all worth it because this is this bizarro labor of love. There's a lot of passion involved in the driving experience. When you're thinking about buying a Ferrari, you're probably not thinking about sitting in traffic, but you're probably gonna. And this is actually an easy car to drive. The revs drop quickly, so you've just gotta be shifting fast enough for that or give it a blip on the upshift on the way in. But honestly, the controls are lovely. The clutch feels precise, but not too heavy. So you know when it's catching, you get that tactile feedback. Shifter, obviously fantastic. If there was an opposite to BMW's rubbery shifter, it's this. So if you've driven like E39s or E46s, think the opposite of that. This is very metal feeling. No, no rubbery bushing feel. And then the steering is super light, but you get feedback. The, the front gets light, you know, in a corner when you're pushing it. You're just gonna manage that a bit. But otherwise, this is just such an easy car to buzz around in. And it feels like the kind of car that in the 90s, if you had the money and you wanted to daily drive this, you could. And a phenomenal extra, Italian horn. That is the stuff. This is a street car first and foremost. It just has a race bred engine. And I love a purpose built car like that, not trying to be too many things at once, which is I think why this stands the test of time. Worst case scenario. <laughs> but man, what a joy to be in this thing. And like, if you do the maintenance, they run. I, I don't think that these are cars that necessarily leave you stranded unless you just don't drive them very often. Craziest yield sign in Massachusetts. You're going to want to put some crazy exhaust on the car if you buy one of these, just because want to let it sing and it's and it's perfect because this car it's quick but it's not like scary fast especially by today's standards which means you can rev it out 
can actually enjoy it at 8,000 RPM. If you get in a new Porsche or even a slightly older Porsche, going up to 8,000 RPM in a GT3, second gear you're at 80 something miles per hour. So that's tough to, to do legally all the time. So if you live in the middle of nowhere and you know you're not gonna run into any people or authorities, then you're fine. But in this car, you could actually live in a fairly suburban or even urban area and, and get your fill of the sound. I love when you pop up the headlights. You can see them from the driver's seat. That's always fun. And it feels forbidden because you almost never see the, the headlights popped up on these because they're just parked somewhere and they're in sleep mode. But you know you're driving it when you see those headlights. So I think that's gonna do it for me in this gorgeous gray driver spec Ferrari F355 Spider. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive and meet your heroes, man. Ferraris are always good. Never say no when someone answered the keys to a Ferrari.